said one day I heard God's voice said if you make me your choice I'll take away your every sin son I'll set you free so I came to him that day Jesus washed my sins away I won't let nothing here hinder me I won't let nothing here hinder me praise God said one day his lovely face I know I'll see I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to prophesy and that's what I want you to say today neighbor you're going to get blessed for God's going to shower his blessings on this house today and you're going to dig in and take out all that he has for you this day in his name amen I'm alive and I'm on fire. There's been a lot of things going on lately, but I see somehow I'm, I'm led to go back to Genesis. I was trying to read in Revelations and where we're at, you know, but the Bible, God threw me all the way back to Genesis and Joseph and the trials he faced with his brother and how he found favor. And isn't that what we're going through? Trials and favor, trials and favor. No matter how bleak it got, he rose all the way to the top. And I believe today I can reach out and grab anything I want. With God with me, all things are possible. First, I want to my name's Carol Augustus from Mount Vernon. It's worth the drive down here. Anyway, I want to thank everybody, Pastor, everybody for their prayers. Uh, about three weeks um, ago, um, boom, um, the enemy hit me with nine things against my body. I got the paperwork right here. You know, when you're going to get blessed to the Lord from a 17-year vision and God pointing his finger to show you that's what you're supposed to do, it's not my vision, it's God's. And you receive it and you say, here I am, send me. And I know my God will go with me. And that's Africa opened up to me. Africa. All of Africa. Countries, states, everywhere are asking me. Me. Okay? But it's God. It's God's work, not mine. So glory to God. Thank you for your prayers. But these nine things. Um, Knox County Hospital. I was unable to drive to Riverside. I was so weak. My son wasn't there. He was at work. But I wanted to see what was going on because I had been praying for six days, commanding everything imaginable. But I knew my God would come through. So went to Knox County. They gave me all these tests. They put me in the CAT scan and they said, right here in writing, I don't know these words. What it means is it's acute renal stenosis, kidney failure. I will shut down now, any moment. 90% blockage in going to one artery to my kidney. I didn't even know you had arteries going to your kidneys. 50% to 60% in the other artery going to my kidney. Very serious. You need to get to, and they got it on here, um, Jeanette, you'd know, um, gastrointestinal whatever specialist, and cardiac, because this can take you into cardiac arrest instantly and you'll be gone and I thought well I ain't afraid to die I die I fly I know where I'm going but I got work for my God to do I'm not having this so I tried to get into a primary care I didn't have one my doctor moved away and I didn't really have him except now and then well couldn't get into a primary care 
till end of July, end of August, and end of September. Called my doctor I went to a year ago just to have testing done before I thought I was going to Arizona. And he had moved away. They had my file. Oh, well, we'll have to consider you a new patient. Oh, we can't get you in until the end of September. And I'm like, okay, but God. Okay, but God. So I called Ohio Gastrointestinal Specialist, because that's where I was supposed to go first in Columbus. Oh, can't get you in without a primary care. How many know you go in a circle with these things? I mean, come on. <laughs> you just do. And so I can't. Yeah, I said something I should not have said. I said, fine, I'll just die. <laughs> I said, oh, Father, I rebuke that. Forgive me in Jesus' name. So anyway, um, I thought, I got to go to Riverside. My son came home and knocked on the door and said, how are you? And I'm weak, very weak, and he knows it's not like me. You all know that. So he said, you're going to the hospital, and I'm taking you. He stayed with me for four days, took off work. And uh, they put me through the CAT scan and all the same tests. And I said, oh, I, I meant to give you my paperwork from Knott's County Hospital. And they said, oh, oh, in a CAT scan they found that you had blah, 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 that renal whatever. Yeah, well, we didn't find that. I raised my hand and I said, praise God. <laughs> praise God. That was, that's serious. But God. And then they said, and we did all your blood work. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, we do find an ulcer. Well, when they said they found there was nothing wrong with me, the insides of your body are like a 35 to a 40-year-old person. You're, you're washed. You're scrubbed clean. It's amazing. And I said, it's called the blood. And they said, oh, your blood's fine. I said, I talk about the blood of Jesus. That's what washes clean. So, you know, I might have been on there in there on an assignment. I don't know. But God, he takes care of everything. So I'm believing that I'm totally healed of whatever this is here. I ain't even going to speak it because I ain't got it. It's healed in Jesus' name. I'm going to, I'm going to preach on a, a subject that the Lord gave me this morning. I got up early. And... Um, I've tried doing this many times. You've all known this, that I've said this, that you'll, you'll take scriptures and write it down, something you think that, that, uh, that God wants you to preach, and here it's you, it's not him. And then at the last minute I get here and he gives me a scripture or gives me something to preach on. And this morning he gave me something on faith again. And if you have your Bibles um, with you, I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The King James Version, which is the one that I that I particularly go by. Some people like the breakdown of different people's understanding of the Bible. But I, I think, in my own mind, in my own thoughts, is that if you have the Spirit of God, He will reveal what the real true word is. And you'll understand it. You won't need somebody to break down... So you can understand it. Just get the Spirit of God and He will do that. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by what? So that means that we have a journey. That's, that's where we start out in our, in our life with Christ is we have a walk with Him in faith. And not by what? Sight. So it's not something you have to see. You have to just believe. And then you have to begin to walk it. So walking in, in the Spirit with your faith is a lot different than just walking in the natural. I walked in the natural sometimes and walked in the wall. But then when you walk in the Spirit, you're walking in a realm that's beyond your comprehension. We all say that we believe there's a God. Even the devil believes it because he was there at the beginning. And a third of his angels was cast out along with him. He knows that word better than you. He knows how to trick you with that word. He knows how to twist it. He knows how to manipulate it. And he knows how to deceive you with that word. Because some people will take a certain scriptures out of the Bible and they'll make an actual doctrine out of it. 
A lot of denominations will tell you that the days of miracles are over. How many can say that's a lie? If the days of miracles are over, we are in deep, deep trouble because we will never make the rapture because that's going to be a miracle. You're going to need something to boost you out of here to get up there. And it takes a miracle work and power to do it. So we walk, we walk in faith and we walk by the Spirit, not in our own spirit, but in His Spirit. Here's another scripture that goes along with that. It says in Romans 8.14, being led by the Spirit of God, not the spirit of a denomination, not the spirit of a church, not the spirit of your pastor, not the spirit of your husband or your wife, the spirit of God. And the more of God you get close to, and God's been dealing with me about this a lot. People are so caught up and wrapped up in trying to find something that ain't going to make a hill of beans down the road 10, 20, 30 years if you live that long. They're more concerned about what's in their visible sight and they ain't looking in the supernatural. I don't know about you, but there is nothing going to stop me from making heaven except me. In 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says, look at the things which are seen. That's what we do. We look at things that are seen. Now, if you truly have faith in God, do you truly trust Him? No. Because here's why. You have to see it or you, He has to prove it before you can believe it. But yet you can go get you a job today and that man or woman that hires you says, I'll give you $15 an hour. You can start Monday morning at 9 o'clock and Friday you'll get a check. You'll trust Him. You'll go to work and you'll work your tail off to prove that you're a good worker believing that He's going to give you a paycheck. But when you ask God for something, you don't really believe He's going to give it to you. It's the truth. And it goes on to say, the things which are not seen, these are temporal. But the things which are not, I'm sorry, which are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are eternal. So whatever God has made a promise in that book, where's my little book at? I'll use this one. Whatever promise he's made in this book to you, it's eternal. But this world offers you everything but the eternal life. It takes you down the roads where you get married, you think that hunk of man is the man you got to have, or that hunk of woman, or no, she, she's a fox. We can't make her a hunk. She'll, well, today you can they don't know whether they're male or female. They got a male, female, and a half man and half dress. It's true, ain't it? So we go and we, we, we see things in our natural, and we desire that, thinking it's okay for us to have it without asking God, is it going to be a hindrance to me? Because there are things that you will take into your life that become a hindrance. What do you mean, Brother Bob? Well, I like that house over there. I'm just going to buy that. Then you buy the house. You find out the roof's bad. Then you know the plumbing's bad and the electric's bad. Then you get mad at God because he didn't tell you. You didn't ask him if it's okay to get it. Well, if it, it ain't the truth, say, oh, me. Oh, my. Somebody said it. Blind faith is trusting in something without an evidence of seeing it. We walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. The Bible says that Jesus, and we hear it, John 3.16, it's quoted all over, and even in football games you see signs and stuff, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe on Him shall have everlasting life. That's not Him. That's a picture reflecting of Him. And the Bible also goes and says it's better for us to believe that we haven't seen than the ones that saw him and then believed. Because in them days they saw Jesus and they believed because of the work's sake, the things that they saw. 
We're believing God for something that He promised and things happen and then we believe. Then we, we start realizing that maybe Jesus truly was the Son of God. Maybe He did take 39 stripes on His back that you could have your healing today. Maybe He's the one that stood in a gap for you and your family and your loved ones. Maybe he's the one that when he promised that I will bless thee and watch over thee and protect thee, he's the one that's going to be there in the end time when he says, come up hither. He's the one that's going to call your name. He said he knows his own. And nothing can pluck him out of his hand. So if you're in the hand of God, you're going home. But you're going to have to stay on that journey. You're going to have to keep that faith. And you're going to have to walk that walk and talk that talk and spit that spit. Trusting in God that you have not seen, yet you still believe it. Nobody has ever seen God. Nobody. Even the man that went up on the mountain had to fall on his face and only could see the hindsight of it and the burning bush. Moses could not even focus on it. And Moses made a mistake and was not allowed to go in the promised land. Did you all read that one? So take it heed today. Don't play with your religion. Don't play with your, your walk with God because something can keep you from going into the promised land, which is heaven. Jesus Christ was made the Word. He said He came to His own. His own received Him not, but as many that did receive Him, to them He gave them the power to become sons like him, the sons of God. What do I need that power for? You're going to need, you are not going to believe what you're going to need in the next few months and years coming if it lasts that long. If you're all blinded, Texas is 69% of Texas is underwater. 70% of the world's underwater. And God promised He would never flood the world again like He did to destroy it in the first time. That's what the rainbow stands for. A covenant, a promise. Disaster after disaster after disaster. Last week, 1,639 earthquakes. How many did you hear about? And that's every week we're getting that report. Sometimes 22, 23, 24 hundred earthquakes but there is one earthquake that's coming that's in the Bible it's been promised it's going to be an earthquake that's going to shake this world and there'll never be another one like it afterwards it's going to be so powerful that it's going to shake and cause the world to split all the buildings are going to crumble and fall there's nothing going to be able to stand to it and it's going to be I believe it's going to be when God says the time is no more Sound the trumpet, Gable. And when he does, boom, that's it. It's over. Mark of the beast is coming. Y'all don't pay attention to that, but it's coming. I read a very interesting subject on the mark of the beast. I got on my cell phone, and I got engulfed in it. I went to bed at 4.30, and I wound up going to bed at 5.30 because it kept me up. They are plotting. This world system. There's going to be a one world currency. A one world church. And a one world government. And it will re be, re be ruled and be revealed to those that are blinded to it. It will reveal. But what's going to happen is, is the rulers are going to control and try to take the Christians out first. Do you ever, does anybody in here have a big mouth person in your family? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Do you, anybody in your family have a know it all? Is there anybody in your family that thinks they know everything and you're dumb? That's what the government thinks of you. They're plotting to put something together that you won't be able to stand up to. They're going to control. Now watch this. You mark this down. You don't have to believe it. But when it happens, come running back. I'm going to say, I don't want to tell you no more. I told you once. 
There's going to be a time coming that you will not be able to put gas in your car unless you have that mark. Ain't going to be no money involved. You won't be able to travel on the highway unless you have this mark because they're going to control the highways. They're going to control the food. They're going to control the guns. They're going to control the electric. They're going to control the gas. They're going to control the churches. Right now, they have people sitting in churches today that are sitting there plotting to destroy those ministries. IRS are in there. CIAs are in there. And they're coming after us. The Bible says in the last days, he said, he's, the trial of your faith is going to be more precious than gold, but he says in the last days that he's going to war against your faith. You can say you love God all you want, but when they, when they start coming in and, and throwing your stuff in the street or throwing you in jail for something you did not do or, or preaching or praying and, and having church the way you want to, I got something text on my... Uh, Chinese or Japanese or somebody got a whole bunch of Bibles they went nuts over there they were so excited about getting a Bible and you don't even read yours they take that book ah, so what I'll read it later I'm guilty of it too sometimes I'm tired I don't want to read I can't read too good anyhow so it don't make no difference that's why I'd rather listen to it on a CD but what's coming down the road is going to be very fearful. And the reason it's going to be fearful is because a lot of people are going to be caught with their pants down. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you get in the book and read it for yourself? Why didn't you seek out God? Don't rely on some preacher to get you into heaven. You've got to get there on your own road map. This is your road map. He said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Well, I go to church every Sunday, and I pay my tithes, and, 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 and I come and clean the church, and, and I do this, and I, that don't mean nothing. That ain't got nothing to do with it. It's your walk with God. It's your faith in Jesus Christ. It's your conversation unto your neighbors. And Hosanna 4, 6, it says, my people, my people die daily for the lack of knowledge or is destroyed by the lack of knowledge. You, you rather, you'd rather somebody else do your studying. You'd rather somebody else tell you what you should be doing when God's the one that should be telling you what to do. You should be led and walking by the Spirit and living in faith realms from faith unto faith unto faith instead of wondering why that person's getting blessed and you're not getting blessed is because you are sitting there judging that person and your mat is all kin out because it don't make any difference what God blesses me with. He blessed me, not you. And if God blesses you, it ain't none of my business. I'm supposed to praise God for Him doing that and you should for me. We're in the same boat together and if there's a hole, somebody stick a finger in it and plug it. In Amos 8, verse 11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor of thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. What's that mean? I'm preaching right now a message on scriptures and some of it's going way over top of your heads. Well, what's he talking about? What's he saying? How many has ever heard about the mark of the beast? How many has had not? We all in here have heard about it. So it should not catch you as a snare. But you do have to be wise as a serpent, harmless as up, and be updated on it and understand what is the mark of the beast and what's it going to control. I've said this before dozens of times. It's going to sound beautiful. How do you think the devil conned a third of the angels that God created and deceived them and got thrown out of heaven? How do you think he done that? 
He made them believe something that was not true. It's going to sound good. Let's say that Chris and Linda here gets married and they have a baby. The government says, I, you need to put a microchip in that baby because if it gets stolen, we can find it. That sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, your husband, he has Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or dementia. If you put a chip in him, we'll find him. Your dog will find him. They're going to do all kinds of things making you think that this is good. And the Bible says if you take that mark and that chip, you're going to hell. And if no other preacher will tell you, you're going to hell. Whether you like it or lump it, I have no control over it. That's what the Bible says. So you're going to have to fight faith and fight the wiles of the devil with your faith so that you don't get caught up in that snare. All the people that are in the armed forces, do you know right now that they're putting chips in these people so they can find them if they get lost over there? There's a lot of technology going on today that most people don't understand. That technology is because the Bible says before the coming of the Lord, knowledge would be what? On an increase. So it's up to you to understand what that knowledge is. Said I'm already been to the water. Said I'm already a bit bad.